This is Igbo Area TV. The author of this article put it this way. How much respect do you show Igbos? But I would like to rephrase. Rather, I would say kudos to the Igbos. The author went on. I am not Igbo. I am proud of my Urobo tribe. However, as a student of history, I wish to show just what these great people came against and yet thrive. Okay. The incessant killing in the north will be glossed over so as to make this article not overly long. The civil war will also not be discussed. However, post-civil war, as I explained in my post-minority report, the system is rigged against you. The rich in Nigeria have major roots in the indigenization decree of 1972 and 1977. I remembered how the banks gave people of other tribes, predominantly Hausas and Yorubas, loan to buy up companies owned by foreigners. Now imagine if the federal government forced Chevron to sell 51% of its shares and that Access Bank would give Nigerians loan to buy the shares. How rich will you be in a year? Five years. That is how many Yorubas and Hausas got to own UAC, Dunlop, Levantis, Cadbury, and all those top companies. Now, while this were going on, Gowan told the Nigerian banks to give TOPS 20 Naira to any Igbo man that had money in the bank before the war. That means, if an Igbo person had 5 Naira before the war, he or she will be given the 5 Naira. But if they had 100 Naira, they could only get just 20 naira in fulfillment of the bank's duty to give the Igbos their money. Ask yourselves, why would the banks give Igbos only 20 naira? Did the banks collapse? So why pay them less than they were given? So while the banks were giving loans to Hausas and Yorubas to buy up Oyibo companies, which they did not build, the Igbos were being cheated out of their rightful monies. Now, not only did the Igbos lose houses and businesses across the land, it is safe to say that between 1970 and 1971, the richest Igbo man had 20 naira that may be the equivalent of maybe 1 million naira. Let us look at how Ali Dangote made his money. He, Dangote, a great man and a pride to Nigeria, has an uncle called Dantata who owned huge chunks of granite pyramids of the 50s and 60s. He gave Dangote a loan and Dangote paid it back in record time. Oh, let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. In addition, Dangote has had his brothers in government. From IBB to Abacha and Abdul Salam. When they now agreed to democracy, he was by this time rich enough to have funded Obasanjo's presidential campaign. And so government policies, be it monopoly, afforded him for rice, sugar, flour, and of course a large share of subsidy, etc., ensures he is the wealthiest Nigeria. Note, many had that opportunity but did not use it. We kowtow to Dangote's investment capabilities. However, for the Igbo man, where will he see an uncle that will loan him money? The richest man in their family had how much as a debt? So while Femi Fani Kayode can inherit the property of his father and grandfather and great-grandfather 
Echidi Kali cannot inherit anything from his grandfather who had businesses in Kanu or even Port Harcourt. This is because neighbors have made his dad's story building theirs. And even someone as educated as Ken Sarwiwa lived in an Igbo war emigrant house as his. A sub point of Niger Delta and Igbo unity. Wayek building was Emeko Ojupu's dad's building. And like that building, thousands and the lands with it, lands worth billions today, were taken from Igbos. Destroyed homeland, stolen and destroyed wealth, taken away from the east. Each and every Igbo had tops 20 naira. Also, his brother is never president that will give him oil block of well lifting. Of 33, only one Igbo man, and because he was in Obasanjo's good graces. Yet, look at how proud they stand today. Look what they have achieved for themselves. First generation world. Top second generation. From being unable to send their first sons to school so he could help look after the shop, to producing first class brains in all departments of modern learning. So today, when you accuse the Igbos of wanting their Biafra or of baby factory, or liking money and ready to do anything for money, remember that just 40 years ago, while the banks were dashing your uncle's loans to buy up all the companies in Nigeria, it stole from the Igbos. Know that appointments have not favored them. Note that they remain persecuted and many speak such ill and hate towards a people forced by need to survive to be extra aggressive towards their sustenance. Maybe if you took their history into consideration, you will not be so critical of them, but instead say, what a resilient people, and give God the glory that for now we and such a great people are compatriots. Ibo Kwenu, Ibo Kwenu, Ibo Kwezono. This article was written by Enna Ofugara. You can also link him on Facebook by that name, Enna Ofugara. That is picture on the screen. Thanks for listening to Igbo Area TV. Please subscribe to our channel for more updates. God bless you and bye for now.